So as we look ahead, Pool Safely 2011 will take CPSC to new cities to highlight the simple, that simple steps save lives. I will be in San Diego in May, just prior to Memorial Day weekend, to kick off this campaign. And in late June, we'll be in Phoenix for a partnership event where we will acknowledge the city's leadership role in advancing the cause of drowning prevention. While there, we will also release our summer snapshot, which takes a mid-year look at the campaign to see how it is going. We need the help of every one of you. We need to amplify the public safety message through established channels to keep this campaign going for years to come. At some point, Congress may not fund this campaign, and if we can keep these partnerships alive, we can keep this campaign going. Through, only through a sustained effort will we truly make a difference. We must reach a new generation of parents, a new generation of grandparents, a continued, and, and continue to focus additional educational efforts on underserved communities. For anyone here today who's not familiar with Pool Safely, the Pool Safely campaign, I would encourage you to become familiar with it by visiting the poolsafely.gov website. It is a great place to start learning about the campaign and its educational tools. And don't forget to follow us on Pool Safely uh, by using Twitter. We also have some new character on our Kids Corner. Splish and Splash are two cute characters whom children have enjoyed watching as they learn proper and safe behavior in and around the pool. We also have a new feature on Pool Safely that Gov that allows individuals to post information about a pool or spa incident, as well as a message and a photo about their event. Uh, the website also encourages individuals to post information to, uh, on safety in and around the uh, pool and spa. Just look at the Share Your Stories link on the site. The Pool Safely campaign is designed to raise public awareness about drowning and drain entrapment prevention, to support industry compliance with safety standards, and to improve safety and to save lives. If there was no Virginia Graham Baker Pool and Spa Safety Act, there would be no Pool Safely campaign. If there was no funding from Congress to support the law, there would be no energy behind our Pool Safely campaign. And at the CPSC, we value the law and the funding to implement it. We will always ask Congress to keep funding this law and this Pool Safely campaign. At the CPSC, we value the law and the funding because we know that all the work that went behind getting this law passed and the tragedy behind it. Former Secretary of State James Baker, Lighthouse Award winner Nancy Baker, along with Safe Kids and NDPA, are among the driving forces behind the passage of this important child safety law. Let there be no doubt, I believe that the Pool and Spa Safety Act is helping to make older pools and spas safer and is creating safe designs for newly constructed pools and spas. I want the CPSC safety advocates and the industries to succeed in meeting the new requirements of the law. Success will lead to lives saved. As many of you are aware, we are facing an important moment in implementing the act. My agency is conducting a serious and an expansive investigation of laboratories that test and manufacture that test and the manufacturers who make the pool and spa drain covers. Here is why this investigation is so important. In 2009, 2010, and 2011, we are not aware of a single child who has died in a drain entrapment incident. This is exactly what the law intended. This is exactly what the law intended, and I want a zero fatality rate to be maintained for years to come. I never want to hear of another drain entrapment, and I know neither do you. Yes, teaching children never to play near drain covers and instructing the service industry to ensure that drain covers are always installed properly is important in preventing entrapments. But what we need are safe drain covers that are compliant with the law in terms of their flow capacity and design. And we need safe, compliant drain covers installed in every pool and spa across the United States. Clearly, we have concerns with some of the drain covers made after the law went into effect.
and we have concerns with the protocols used by certain labs that tested them. Just last week, the technical staff at the CPSC held a public meeting to hear testimony and ask questions of the laboratories, manufacturers, industry, standards organization, and other important stakeholders. The staff at the CPSC is working night and day on this problem because we want to conclude our investigation before Memorial Day weekend, if not sooner. I want all of you in this room to know that the CPSC has the power to act and correct the safety of products that either violate a standard or impose an unreasonable risk of harm to the public. All of you know that the, indus and the industry needs to know and families needs to know which covers are safe and which ones need to be fixed. The CPSC is working to answer those questions so that everyone feels safe in their backyards, wading kitty and community pools. Even though unblockable drain covers are not the subjects of our current investigation, I want to take a minute to restate my position on these types of covers. I believe the Pool and the Spa Safety Act requires a single main drain that is, a, uh, is a, a blockable size to be covered with a compliant drain cover and have an anti-entrapment backup system or device in place. The majority of my fellow commissioners set a policy that allows a large unblockable drain cover to be placed over a small single main drain system without a backup protection. I have and I, can, and I continue to respectfully disagree on this, pro, uh, this policy. But as the NP, uh, NDPA membership knows, best practices and drowning prevention call for layers of protection in and around pools and spas. And I support layers of protection, and I will continue to voice my opposition to way, the way the Commission voted last year about these unblockable drain covers. And I hope that one day we will make a change in this vote. So you have not heard the last of that issue. Now, during these past two years, as the chairman of the Consumer Product Safety Commission, I traveled all across the country urging parents to create layers of safety in and around pools and in their homes. See, water safety is not only a part of what the CPSC does, is there are thousands of products that my small but vital agency oversees. This is a huge task, and my agency recently took a huge step forward in giving consumers open access to vital safety information. On March the 11th, the CPSC launched the new saferproducts.gov website. This database provides consumers with open access to product safety information that most people have never seen before. This is uh, why we call saferproducts.gov the biggest open government initiative we have undertaken at CPSC in many years. I believed an informed consumer, consumer is an empowered consumer, and this new tool provides consumers with open access to incident reports filed by other consumers. Viewing these reports even before the CPSC announces a recall could be potentially life-saving for com consumers who use the site. The site allows consumers, child care providers, health care professionals, government officials, first responders, and others to submit reports of harm or potential reports of harm. Contrary to comments that you may have heard from some industry associations, there are more safeguards in place by manufacturer, for manufacturers with our database than any other government database. First, CPSC staff will screen every report before it's posted. Second, manufacturers will have 10 days to review any report citing their pr product. The company can tell us if there is materially inaccurate information or confidential information in the report, which we will remove if that claim is correct. Uh, companies can also submit a comment, which will be posted alongside the published report. So to summarize, you can use the website to submit an incident report, search for incident reports involving a product that you have purchased or are thinking of purchase, purchasing, and search for recall information. I go on there regularly to see the products that we've recalled and to also see what consumers are saying about products that we need to know. The saferproducts.gov website is user-friendly, and I hope that you will bookmark it and use it frequently. We are confident that the database will become a crucial tool in advancing consumer protection in the near future. But be, you should know we have had our fights on this database both at the Commission and in Congress. And so far we're still up and running and we hope to remain so. 
The database objective is illustrative of what we seek to do at the CPSC. Protect families from unreasonable risk from consumer products and encourage industry to build safety into the products that they make and sell. In closing, I would like to express my appreciation to the NDPA and to all of you for everything that you have done and continue to do to promote pool and spa safety. We welcome uh, new partners into the campaign, uh, and we are expanding our legions from coast to coast, everybody working together toward a common goal of teaching America to pool safely. Spas and pools are wonderful places for recreations and sports, but they also can be death traps, as we too sadly know. As a nation, we must do a better job of protecting children and teaching parents about the inherent dangers associated with pools, spas, and all bodies of waters, even the little creek that I swam in. I encourage each of you to get involved if you aren't already. Learn more by visiting Pool Safely campaign table right here at the symposium. Right outside the door, you'll find all of our materials, and we hope that you'll take them with you. Take an extra water safety step. Adopt responsible behaviors around pools and spas. Learn new water safety skills and have the right equipment to avoid, avert or uh, manage a, an emergency. If we can repeatedly reach the public with these messages, we have a good chance of saving some lives each year. Thank you once again to Bob, Maureen, and the NDPA team for inviting me to speak here today. I hope you enjoy your time at the symposium, and I wish you all the best in your efforts to prom in promoting water safety in your community. And I would, as much as I'd like to stay with you for the rest of the symposium this morning, we are going now to advance the information about Spool Safely with interviews, with, mag uh, with radios and newspapers, uh, which is what we do uh, every time we get the chance. So we are now going to have about two hours of interviews. So have a great conference, and uh, it's been a pleasure being with you. Thank you.